So, again, good afternoon. Ano? So, welcome to our book meeting. And today, our topic is all about the preparation and schedule of cost of goods sold and the preparation of financial statements. Okay. So, our problem here is Caburata Company. Then, this is the trial balance of Caburata Company during April 30, 2021. So we do have also notes here that all amounts are assumed as assumed that the physical count of inventory at the end of the month is 6,200. Therefore, ito po yung sa physical count na makikita nyo usually sa ending problem noong isang company. So in this case, if you're going to see whether it is perpetual or periodic, I-analyze mo ito, meron siyang ginamit na purchases, purchase discounts, purchase returns, and allowances and trading. Therefore, the company is using periodic inventory system. And which is why we have to prepare the schedule of cost of goods sold because the cost of goods sold is not recorded during the journal entry or the journalizing. Rasta? So let's start. Again, kapag ikaw ay periodic inventory system, gagawa ka muna ng schedule of cost of goods sold bago ka gumawa ng statement of financial performance. Pero kapag, income, kapag ikaw po ay perpetual, since nire-record mo na yung cost of goods sold after mong makaroon, magkaroon ng benta or sales, is you don't have to prepare schedule of cost of goods sold because you were able to record it right away. Okay? So let's start. The schedule of cost of goods of the Cabrata Company for the month ended April 30, 2021. It will start on your inventory beginning. So March uh, March 31, 2021, may natira kayo nun. So kung existing na yung company. So therefore, ma-transfer, kinabukasan, yun naman yung beginning April. So in this case naman, ay kakasimula pa lang yung company. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, si inventory niya, zero. So, zero pa lang siya. So, zero ka dyan. So, by the way, in periodic, ano, pag nakakita kayo ng libro na ang problem inventory dito, tapos periodic, usually, kung unadjusted trial balance yan, beginning balance yan. At yung physical count naman, ay ito yan. Makikita nyo dito. 6,200. No, makita niya yan dun sa gawing dulong uh, transaction na kung saan di mo naman i-re-record sa journal entry, kundi inanote mo lang kasi gagamitin mo yun sa iyong positive result. So let's start. Inventory, zero siya. Zero pa lang beginning mo. Then purchases mo, mga tol. How much is your purchases? Tingin ka dito. Ito'y purchases, 160,000. Then, purchase discounts mo. Purchase discounts mo ay 3,2. 2,200. Purchase returns, 3,500. Pupulot-pulot ka lang. So, pagplasin mo yung deductibles. Then, 6,700. Yung ima-minus mo kay purchases. Kasi pambawas yung purchase discounts at PRA. So, uh, 160 minus 6,700 is equal to 153,300. Ia-add mo naman dito ngayon si freight in na kung saan hindi naman makakarating sa'yo yung goods kung hindi ka nagbayad ng tracking fee or shipping fee. So, idagdag mo yan sa net cost of purchases. So, 153,300 na net purchases I-add mo yung Wait lang. Here. 153,300 plus 28 is equal to 156,100. Then, i-add mo yung inventory mo beginning. So, mag a ka, 0 plus 156,100 is equal to 156,100. Then, di ba nagbilang ka sa dulo? Magkano yung sinabi? 6,200 yung natira. 
Ingat tayo kasi baka magsobra sa ng zero or makulangan ka ng zero. Then minsan nagkakamali kaya nagkakaroon ng balances. So, 156,100 minus kung si 6,2. Ang magiging kalabasan niya ay yung total cost of goods sold mo. Bakit po ganoon? Bakit naging total cost of goods sold? Ba't mo mayroon niya sa inventory? O di ba? Di ba may natira ka na nakarang buwan? Kasi lang kasi simula yan, zero. Tapos, ito yung kabuang gastos mo para magkaroon ka ng inventory. So, in mo yon yung natira, yung beginning mo, plus yung ngayon na pinurchase mo, ang, magiging, ang total niyan, magiging total available, uh, total goods available for sale. Meaning, yan yung pinaka pwede mong ibenta ngayong period ng April. Tapos, ang natira lang ng dulo ng April, 6-2. So, saan napunta? Napunta po dun sa binenta. Therefore, nabenta siya. Kaya wala na siya. So, ito po yung pukunan mo dun sa binenta. So, now that you were able to identify your total cost of result, you were able now to compute for your net income. So let's start with gross sales. Yung gross sales po, meaning ng gross sales, pang kabuan, pang kalahatang, benta. Wala ka pang binabinus dyan. So gross sales mo, pulutin mo lang sa sales. Magkano? 250,000. Then sales discount ka. Magkano ang sales discount mo? 2,500. Then magkano ang sales returns yung allowances mo? 4,000. Then pagplasin mo yung 2,500 plus 4,000 equals 6,500. So, iba-minus mo yan sa 250,000 kasi yung discount, binigyan mo yung kay customer. So, bawas sa benta mo yan. Yung dinalik sa'yo ni customer na goods, o oh, bawas din sa sales mo yan. So, yan po. 243,500 ang net sales mo. And ang ililess mo na ngayon naman yung ikaw ay 149,900 na cost of goods sold mo. Ang magiging total mo dyan ay 93,600. Ayan, 93,600 mo. Gross income pa lang yan. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo pa naman minus. Iba mo pang ginastos. Kasi sa negosyo, hindi lang naman yung ginastos mo, yung pinuhunan mo. Kung magkano yung binili mo na merchandise. Ano? Kundi mayroon ka pang mga operating expenses, katulad na salaries. Pasweldo ka ng tao mo. Freight out. Rent expense. Utilities. Okay? Yan. So ngayon, total mo yan. Paplasin mo to lahat, 29,400. Tama ba? Okay. So ngayon, 93,600. I-minus mo yung 29,400. Ang iyong operating profit ay 64,200. So yan po ay operating profit kasi after deducting the operating expenses, ang lilitaw ay operating profit. So since basic accounting kayo, Ayun, sa operating profit mo sa exam, sa assessment, ay yun na rin si net income. Okay? So, sa C, 64,200. Always remember that once you do have a money columns, meaning pera yung usapan dito, always put peso sign on the first um, peso or the money value, then the final answer. And of course, on your final answer, there must always be double line, double rule. Papansin ninyo, laging may first money column, then double line. Okay? So ngayon, tapos ka nang mag-compute ng net income. Kumita ka ng 64,200. Okay, now you'll be able to compute now the, aren, statement changes in equity. Kasi ang makikinabang naman sa benta mo, or kita mo ay ang ang October. 
ang may-ari. O, yun din sa capital niya. Ano, magkano ba yung puhunan ni Rata, Mr. Rata? Si Mr. Rata, pinuhunan niya ang simula ay 50,000. So, idagdag mo yung net income na 64,200. Ang total niyan, pagplasin mo lang, 114,200. Ima-minus mo naman ngayon yung withdrawal niya, yung drawings ng 5,000. Ang pinaka-capital mo lang talaga ay ang ay 109,200. Okay. Okay. Now that you have identified na ang pagbabago sa iyong Capital account, which is your account of my Aris business, it became one hundred nine thousand two hundred from fifty thousand initial investment. So, maganda ba? Yes. Matutuwai my Aris, na. So, lahat ba ganyan sa negosyo? No. Yung iba usually walang pinikita sa simula, na. Tapos kaya may term na, ah, bumabawi pa lang ako. So, parang ganun. You know? May mga ganun negosyo. Hindi lagi, fairy tale ang negosyo. Ano? Hindi yun totoo. Ano? Pero na lang kung medyo illegal yung gagawin. Mag-joke lang. Okay. So, ganun. Okay. So, let's move with the financial position. So, si financial position or also known as balance sheet. You know? So, balance sheet po siya dati ngayon, statement of financial position. So, ganito po yung format na gagamitin natin, even on your assessment. So, uh, kung mapapansin po, tago ko muna itong, ano, para makita ninyo yung... Yan. So, ayan. So, current assets mo, yung cash mo, Accounts receivable inventory, supply mo, or the supplies, ano, ay yan po yung current assets. Magagamit mo yan. Si supplies, ang gamit mo yan within one year. Sa inventory, makoconvert mo yan ng pera. Within one year, ano, accounts receivable can be collected within one year and the cash can be used right away. So meaning current assets siya. So i-copy mo lang siya. Mm -hmm. Medyo nag-ahang yata. Okay, not responding pa nga siya. Oh. Yan. Then after that, I e, ano mo na yan. Then equipment mo, non-current, kasi ito po yung mga gamit mo na ano, na magagamit mo yan ng more than one year. Therefore, non-current asset siya. So, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, total current assets, pinag-plus mo lang lahat ito. Ito na yun. Then, since to wala naman nang i-add dyan, iisa niya lang dyan. Dahil dito, iisa niya lang ng non-current assets. Therefore, 25,000. So, pag samayin mo yung current, then plus total non-current, non-current to. is equal to 168,000 total assets. So, check naman natin ito dito. Ano? So, ito ay accounts payable mo. How much is your accounts payable? 15,000. Then, how much is your non-current liabilities na notes payable? 50,000. Pantay ba? Oops, dito sa inventory mo, 6-2, yung natira. So, dito sa statement of financial position mo, hindi mo to ikokopyahin itong inventory. Kasi dapat sabi sa inyo, yung itong nagpapakita ng inventory dito sa trial balance for periodic, beginning yan. So, hindi po siya yan. Ang gagamitin mo ay yung natira. Since ang usapan na dyan ay at the end of April 2021. So, as of April 30, 2021, your inventory is 6,200. So, your total assets is 149,200. That's 25,000 non-current assets. 174,200. 
And then your liabilities and owner's equity, current liabilities mo 15,000, non-current liabilities mo 50,000. Then your rata company capital at the end of the month, dito mo kukunin yun sa changes in equity. That's why nauna siya, in compute, 109,200. Therefore, your total liabilities and owner's equity is 174,200. Check mo ba kung total ba siya or equal siya kay total assets, total equity, and liability. 174,200, 174,200. Pantay. Therefore, tama yung ginawa mo. Araso. So, uh, yung another financial statements that we will be preparing is the statement of cash flows. But for the cash flow statement. You know? Pero yun po, I did discuss natin on a separate session. So, thank you very much. And that concludes our discussion.